when I started working in this sports domain, it was all about injury management most of the time. For about a decade working with a renowned sports surgeon, I was very fortunate to learn the surgical side of many injuries sustained by athletes across multiple disciplines. Along with the surgical management, I also witnessed treatment modalities offered many injuries requiring non-surgical or conservative management. I also observed that most of the physiotherapists, mainly working with orthopedic surgeons, cater to post-operative rehab and cold cases like backaches and neck pains, but did not focus more on the management of sports injuries. As I went on working more and more, I started to get curious about the players and athletes suffering from either training injuries or in competition injuries, and especially their return to sports. Post-recovery was a big concern. My schedules were very hectic then and could not find time to explore more. After gaining better understanding of the clinical management of injuries for more than 10 years and having graduated for 15 years, I decided to formally study more. I went on to complete my master's in sports and exercise medicine from one of the top UK universities where I got admission purely based on my clinical experience. This was an eye-opener for me. Although a tough course with having lost touch with sitting in the classroom, studying, doing assignments with young doctors, and that too in a completely different education system at a foreign university was a huge challenge. Why I call this as an eye-opener is because I was mostly working on one side of the frosted glass, barely knowing what's on the other side until now. With the classroom and clinical stuff, along with a lot of lab work while completing my thesis in biomechanics, there was a huge void in the system out here in India. Like what Oliver Reed, an actor, said, and I quote, life shouldn't be about sitting around, staring at frosted glass. Life should be lived, and that's all there is to it. I decided to come back and work towards bridging the gap between athletes' injury management and performance enhancement, helping them to achieve more scientifically. The other side of frosted glass was a huge learning. I understood not only the medical and scientific aspect of it, but also the depth of functioning of a system which was constantly trying to excel in the field. The whole culture of modern sports science and medicine was exposed to me, including the awareness in the society to play any sport, either as a recreation or as a profession. Most of us know that even today, a lot of coaches and trainers here still follow age-old methods of training for that particular sport along with some fitness lessons. Not all of them are wrong because unfortunately, there aren't ever that they can take help of experts. Plus, we don't have a mandatory system here of having certified coaches and trainers working in this field. And most importantly, there is a serious lack of professionalism. I knew it was a tough task and it was like swimming against the current. Now, after coming back from UK, I started working with a small group of very young kids, ensuring they pick up some scientific methods of training. Their parents and particularly the coach of these kids were possibly on my page then to understand that scientific training is the key. Unfortunately, then circumstances didn't allow me to continue with the support I was extending to their performances. Although I continued to see a few of them in the clinic, for either injuries or performance enhancement advice, even after stopping their training 10 years ago. A couple of them went to represent the country. For the next few years, I was professionally involved with the Indian football and kabaddi leagues, working shoulder to shoulder with the international technical support staff, also with the Indian tennis players. A sense of where we lack in winning on major platforms started to bother me. In spite of having a huge pool of talent around, I could see things not moving in the right direction. Similar things I observed in injury management. There are so many athletes who probably could have made a mark in their sports career if they would have had received the right guidance at the right time. So I began talking to some athletes, parents and coaches who were being treated by me for certain injuries. I focused on educating them subtly on importance of sports science and medicine and injury management and performance enhancement. Some agreed, and I guess some not. As we all know that coaches are the pillars of athlete development at all levels. They can actually decide the best for an athlete 
or a team if they wish. The support staff, if work on one page with the coaches, there are high chances of good results, is what I feel. Now, with my experience and exposure in working with the, at the national level, a few inquisitive eyeballs were attracted. I decided to keep trying to educate everyone who comes to me and follow evidence-based methodologies. I continue to rely on my clinical judgment. With this approach, I could form a team of like-minded experts who not only were academically qualified, but also had similar interests, that is athlete development. It's not only injury management that needs more individualized exercise prescription. It's also the strength and conditioning program that has to sync with the athlete or a team profile. Whether it's injury assessment or musculoskeletal screening and fitness testing, we get enough information from the analysis. Based on this assessment, we can design the exercise prescription. In case of injuries requiring expert opinion, referring the injured player to an expert sports surgeon for intervention as and when required or Alternatively, planning a conservative management can be the focus. Now, coming to how we started getting results with this scientific approach, I wish to quote a few examples as to how we approach and this has helped us give me better results. Now, let me talk about an 18-year-old female sprinter who came to me for repeated hamstring injury at crucial phases of the competition. After evaluation, we identified issues and corrected her biomechanics, reducing the load on hamstrings, simultaneously coordinating with her coach and monitor her training intensities. We shifted gears to strength and conditioning sessions, monitoring every session on a platform we call ACWR, that is Acute Chronic Workload Ratio. This is a simple but a well-designed effective tool to address not only overtraining or undertraining, but also help injury prevention and peaking at the right time. Simultaneously, we also managed to set her individualized nutrition program. And Ola, she performed very well at the recently concluded national competition. She is now the fastest 100 meter sprinter under 20 year age group in the country today. Undoubtedly, there are multiple factors responsible for the results, but today I'll stick to this domain. It's about the teamwork and scientific efforts coupled with the coach and athletes supporting well. The next two cases I would like to mention are of weightlifters. It was a time recently when we bagged our first silver medal at Olympics. Suddenly there was a huge roar around this sport. We were already working with our weightlifters then. One of the young army guys suffered a massive injury during a heavy training session, tearing his labrum, which is a soft tissue cartilage in the shoulder socket, and snapping his biceps tendon in one of his shoulders. His surgery was very well performed and we took over his rehab program. Now, generally, there are a lot of hindrances in getting back to sports, especially this being weightlifting. With the help of my expert teammates, we decided to go a bit aggressive, monitoring regularly his signs and symptoms correlating it clinically. This particular player not only recovered faster post his surgery, but also won a gold medal at the recently concluded national championships and getting selected for the Commonwealth Games camp. We are hoping he'll get a medal for our country next year. One more weightlifter who was about to quit his career after his post-operative elbow injury was referred to us for guidance and monitoring rehab program, followed by strength and conditioning sessions. Not only did we manage to instill positivity, but also revoke his hunger to perform well. Result was a medal at the Nationals and qualifying for the Commonwealth Games selection trials. The key in this case was our focus on biomechanics of his entire movement, including adding orthotics to his shoes for corrections. To conclude, let me try and briefly answer this question. What is it that we should offer any sports person aspiring to be a champion with the dream of a podium finish at the highest level? Primarily, it is professionalism. Build a team of professionals with similar objectives. Keep educating the parents, athletes, and coaches who are approachable. Continue self-education to understand the latest scientific evidences. Conduct a proper assessment. Advise a corrective exercise prescription. 
follow a structured scientific strength and conditioning program with a periodized plan, preferably executed under expert supervision. Take help of all related experts and be on one page. We have started doing it slowly. Surely we see the light at the end or rather seeing on the other side of the frosted glass. The mantra remains. As I often say, performance is a lifestyle, not an achievement. Thank you.